One, two, you hear the clock ticking, tick, time, you about to stop living, tick, time, I want you to remember me, tick, time, but the day don't have no memory, I'm coming, nobody can stop me, ain't nobody can hold me, ain't nobody can control me, I'm coming, I'm here to do my thing, I'm here to bring the pain, I'm never ever gonna change, I'm coming. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I never did that one. <laughs> what is up, people? It's your boy MVP back here with another MVP podcast. Uh, this time I've got, got my man all the way from, very far, he's all the way from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> uh, my man, Trip. That's good, that's good. Yeah, hey, <laughs> How's it going? How you doing, my man? I am good. I am good. Yeah? Busy. Where did you stay, by the way? Melbourne? Uh, yeah, like uh, near Williamstown. Yeah. Just over there. Let's get yeah. All the way from Williamstown. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Thank you for coming on, bro. Um, oh, thank you for been having me. To, been meaning to do this on, you know, for a while. Um, but we finally got it, got it in. Um, so, we'll... Where should we start? Okay, so we'll, we'll talk crumb first because uh, that's bas- that's basically our like connection. Our thing, yes. Yeah, we're, we're both crumb dancers. Kind of been doing it for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I've known you for. Well, I'm probably hitting the double digits, man. Soon, in ten, years. Ten years. Yeah. Because I started in 2009. Right. Yeah. First. Appearance around 2009, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you started in 2009. How did mm. you start? Uh, how did you find out about this? Who was like the first kind of uh, guy to kind of bring you in? Um, so, um, the first person who actually brought me in was Christy. Uh, if you know Christy from your crew, yeah, 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 because she used to crump back in the day, like home and all that I'm stuff, yeah. Uh, and yeah, we were just basically training for Mew Crew. Uh, we were doing a show and we did like a little crump set. I knew nothing about crump. I just went crazy and tried to do some stuff. Yeah. And then slowly she just kind of uh, introduced me to Roxas and uh, I got to go do his classes at MMA back at Melbourne Music Academy for all those people who don't know the OG spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fast. Got a lot of memories in that spot, man. Yeah, man. Sure. And that's why I met like a lot of people like even like Russell and Gian or Scout Antagonize. Yeah. Yeah, he knew his class when he used to run that. Yeah. yeah. Um so what was it about the dance that actually like made you like you know I wanna I wanna, I wanna keep doing this? I think it was very different. Uh it was very unrestricting. Uh and I think that was one of the first appeals, just how high energy it was and stuff like that. But with me, I was always kind of like in and out of crump in the beginning because right. um, I was still doing Cory and I was doing Cory heavily with uh, Mew Crew and Rewind as well at the same time. So because of that, I would like appear and disappear. Yeah, yeah. had a lot on your plate too, man. A little bit, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. So um, I was kind of one of those uh, in and out kind of yeah. crumpers, yeah, who was just kind of around but not really fully into it or fully committed to it, yeah. Uh, and then uh, later on, um, yeah, I think it was when Baby Eyes and Tight Eyes came down for Crump Intensives. Yeah, it kind of really, really sparked my fire to just like be, like, I think this is my main style. This is what I want to do. But it's actually funny that you said that because I, I think I kind of remember you telling me this, that that was the moment. Yeah. And it's funny how, you know, you go, you take a workshop, right, you get inspired. And then that just kind of, you know, helps you make certain decisions because yeah. you're a little unsure. But so I think I feel like there's a lot of crumpers like that. Like right? there's similar upbringing to you where they're involved in, in a lot of different groups, different projects, different dance styles. And then they start to think to themselves like, you know, I maybe need to focus on one. Yeah, I think, yeah, a lot of new gens, I think they're starting to come through either through the all style scene or through the urban scene. And a lot of them are a little bit still like kind of what I was like once yeah. foot in, one foot out. Yeah, because they're still doing their thing. That's cool, man. There's nothing wrong with that. I think uh, wherever they find the outlet and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, for me, it was just like, yeah, I think it was that workshop and that whole weekend that kind of like just yeah. really sparked that up for me. And I was like, fuck, all right. 
I want to do this. Like I want to. I want to be good at this. I don't want to be just like that guy who comes around here and there. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I had a question. Just slipped my mind. Um, so you were one of those guys who were dabbling in a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. So like I started off dancing when I was about seven years old back in Russia. So I started off with breaking. Um, so wait, guys, did you know he was Russian? I forgot to mention that, bro. <laughs> this is um, he's from Russia. Yeah, I don't know anyone. Oh, Khabib. Oh no, he's Khabib. not from Russia. Is he uh, from Russia? No, he's not from Russia. He's from um, one of the countries around Russia. No, I just make anyways. <laughs> um, I want to say Kazakhstan, but I could be wrong. Yeah, you're probably right. I feel like I should know that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't follow him, man. I feel like we to know that. Uh, okay, so you started dancing at seven. Yeah, started dancing at seven, yeah. uh, and then uh, I moved to Cyprus for a year and a half, and then I came to Australia, and basically um, I was just still dabbling in break dancing, and then I started to freestyle and like club dancing and stuff like that, and then uh, slowly went into uh, more Corey scene. Um, I had to stop for a while because I got into a car crash and I kind of injured myself for a while so I didn't really dance for yeah. ages yeah and then um, yeah it just kind of took my time to recover but that was like I was young I was like 14 15 years old yeah I don't remember when that was Shit. like 15 years ago damn yeah car uh, crash even yeah, yeah, <laughs> car crash even. That's, that's um, something, that's pretty brutal. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, I talk about it, it's not like a secret or anything yeah. like that. Um, yeah, we just um, got a little bit unlucky, uh, and uh, it was me and my brother and his mates and stuff like that, and we all just, uh, we piled into a car, there was like six or seven of us in the car. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we ended up losing control of the car and uh, we hit a light post, uh, the back snapped open, all the five people that were in the back flew out of the car. Holy crap. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, a whole bunch of people got injured and stuff like that. Like we found my brother on the other side of the road and he like basically flew across the pavement. Um, bro, that's a serious crash, bro. Yeah, it, it, like I look back at it and I laugh about it, but like back then, like if we think about it, it's like, fuck, we we are so lucky to be alive. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, no one died or no one really had any permanent injuries for the rest of their life. So we're pretty lucky. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did die. <laughs> Me too. Because <laughs> yeah, you've been a big, <coughs> a big part of our community, our movement, like. One of the things that I like that, because I've been here from the, from the start, is like, I get to see everyone's journey when they come into the crump game from when they first start and now, right? Mm. Uh, so I've seen you when you first came in and now I see you, you're like one of our leaders here, you're, made, you're running a lot of events, um, which I think that's what, as, as someone that comes from that era, that mm. OG era, that's exactly what we want to see mm. you know because the last thing i want to do is be like in my 20th year still like the leader guy like <laughs> and the only one who like running stuff and yeah stuff exactly like it's I like it's just it's really cool to see you like you know really take that step um i guess like you what kind of made you want to start running events um and you just had one like a mm. couple weeks ago yeah, um, I guess, damn, I never thought about it. Um, I just wanted to, um, I guess, um, I felt like I could do it. So if I could do it, why shouldn't I? If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, um, I felt like uh, I was able to create something. So I was like, all right, let's create something. Let's do something. Let's uh, try to run an event. Um, and then, like, you know, growing up in this crump scene and stuff like that, I'd always witness um, uh, other guys, like, running, like, for example, antagonize when you run, um, when you run um, crump intensives, which kind of, like, sparked the fire. Yeah. Obviously, with you, the next level, there's Clash. Um, back in the day, which I think I only went to one, was, like, the game, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Chaos ran Chaos that. Chaos ran that. Yeah, so it's just kind of, like, uh, I just really enjoyed the whole... Uh, idea of an event because it just brings the whole community together yeah so I guess I just felt like I could try
try to do something, so I should. Why not? Yeah. And um, I'm glad you did because, like, to be in that position, right, to run events, I feel like you have to earn the respect of the community because, the like, if you're someone who's not well-respected, you haven't earned just stripes, it's hard for people to kind of get, mm. <clears throat> kind of get behind that, you know, whereas, like, we see somebody like you, it's like, he's putting in the work, he's battling, he's sessioning, mm. he's got his own fan, he's building up other, other people, um, and then when you run an event, like, people will listen, like, hey, that's a guy that, you know, I'd like to support, mm. because he's been supporting the scene, um, you know, a lot. Mm. Um, I mean, I always felt like, you know, you have to lead by example. So if, you know, if you want people to come to your event, obviously you have to do good by people, first of all. But second of all, it's also, I think a big thing is not only respect, but trust. So it's like, 100%. I think that I spent enough time in the community to like, you know, uh, show who I am for people to be comfortable to go, ah, oh, Vlad's running or Trip's running an event. Oh yeah, I know, like I know Trip. I know that he will do good by us, by the community and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I think respect and just trust goes a long way and stuff like that. Just, I guess, um, trying not to just randomly appear out of nowhere and go, yo, I'm running an event. <laughs> and it's like, uh, who are you, man? Like, you know, you're like, okay, cool. But like, don't expect a hundred people to come through straight away just because right. like, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to run an event because, yeah, I think you need to put in the hard yards and kind of like, you know, yeah, like you said, just like, you know, build yourself up and stuff like that. Yeah, but you know, back in the day, it was like, that was the thing we hated the most, was like, just random people, sometimes they were not even in the dance community, mm -hmm. would come in and try to try to run our events for us and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I feel like it's our responsibility as leaders to, to build the next, you know, the next generation of leaders. Definitely, definitely. Um, um, yeah, it's a bit tricky when, like, you know, someone, like an outsider comes and tries to run an event in your city. Um, yeah, I think it's just hard, like, uh, because straight away there's that whole, like, kind of, like, who are you? Yeah. Like, like, you know, <laughs> why are you running this? Like, you know, you know nothing about a community. Are you just doing it to try to make some coin? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it is hard, I think. So I think trust and respect, like I said, goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah, and the trust thing is like, if you can get that, right, you're, you're good to go. Because mm. even if they don't understand a decision that you've made, mm. because they trust you, they'll follow you they'll anyway. They, know, yeah. they just know you always have their best interests at heart even if they don't fully understand or mm -hmm. comprehend, you know, what, what right. you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Super key. Definitely. Um, no, I definitely agree with that as well. Yeah. Because uh, for me, like this year when I ran Battle Royale, I was really amazed at like how many crumpers signed up. Like, mm. it looked like a crump event. Like people yeah. actually <laughs> hit me up and they're like, is there an all-style division? I'm like, it's an all-style <laughs> event, but there's just the crumpers. It's just like, you know, they, they got my back this year, so I really appreciate it, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and like, we'll, we'll talk about Battle Royale. Like, last year, mm -hmm. compared to this year, yeah. what were the differences? Because last year was the first time we ever did <clears> it. <throat> this year, like, the good thing about doing something the first time is then you got something to look at to see mm. what changes need to be made, what needs improving, and then you implement them the second time around. So what was different the first time and the second time? Um, so, I mean, the uh, biggest change was probably I went from first year we had an all-style division and a crumb division. Uh, this year we decided to just an all-style division and just kind of see how like everyone comes together and gels together. Even though a lot of the crumpers joined the all-style division last year anyway. Yeah. But uh, this year we just decided to do just like one thing. Um, also just kind of make the night not so massive as well just because you know it's it's quite tiring for five hours being at an event yeah um, with so many divisions sometimes it's hard so we just like chucked it all into one um, but for me <laughs> man I was under pressure just because like um, and this is not to like uh, 
brag or like look at me but a lot of people like came up to me and said like you know last year the first event that i ran they're like oh man but i was sick like you know something yeah. different or super tight so i was like oh shit that means i have to do better next year <laughs> <coughs> i have to do something different or something <coughs> yeah um but i think um yeah uh learned a lot from the first one just like you know um how to run it how to market it better or like you know how to structure it a little bit and uh yeah for me and just the whole um battle royale team it was for us to just kind of like um try to take it the next step higher and just kind of like trying to set a bar uh, and push not only ourselves but i guess everyone else who runs events and stuff like that yeah i was at battle royale and i just loved it man it was just like you had everything there like there was something for everybody right there you had like um an indigenous performance um like you said you had different styles of dancing you had like you had the screen and it was you had so it was kind of like entertaining to watch an event like that was that actually added to the fun mm -hmm. of the event was just seeing like everyone's faces on the on the screen and if they got eliminated they got xed out like mm -hmm. it, well, that was cool man like and just even like, there were people there that I, that I spoke to as well that we're talking about oh this was amazing i spoke to um troy mm -hmm. troy's parents it was mm -hmm. cool to see like you know she brought her family along to, and I, they gave awesome feedback they're like this is amazing like troy asked him oh if you want to like after i think it was after she got eliminated mm -hmm. she was like oh if you want you can go home now and they were like no nah, no nah, we want to stay you know like that's and when you're that's awesome when you're getting that kind of reaction mm -hmm. from like non non crumpers yeah like that's how you know like that's you're on the you right path yeah, yeah yeah because yeah. <laughs> we know the dancers are going to be entertained like yeah. this is our thing we love this but when you're running an event a lot of your focus has to be on like spectators the spectators because like, they're the ones that are paying to come in you know what i yeah, mean yeah of course yeah uh no that's that's awesome to hear and i think that's one of the things that we wanted to like really concentrate on this year as well because uh last year we had a good turnout but uh we didn't have as bigger turnout and spectators as I thought we would and I was a little bit like oh I wonder like how come there's not that many people watching and I can understand that like a dance event could be quite tiring just like coming there and being non-dance and just sitting there and watching dancing and uh, it can be not as exciting as it is for dancers because dancers will see like a beat kill or kill yeah, off yeah. and dance like wow and people see it oh that's really cool <laughs> and to them a lot of the stuff looks the same you know like even though it doesn't to us so this year like yeah we really did want to try to get as many spectators more through the door and kind of like make it a little bit more entertaining yeah yeah so obviously this is going to be an annual event right you're gonna yes, have another one next year event. so yeah battle royale volume 3 2020 yeah um, no set date yet but it'll be around the same time yeah uh, and yeah i'm gonna try to push and try to make it a bit bigger or you know see how we can improve and what we learned from this year mm. yeah actually if, oh, let's, let's, have, let's have a little bit of fun with this so battle royale yeah, there are a few controversial calls during, during this thing right there yeah. are a lot of yeah. lot of i've heard a lot of complaints <laughs> um but so you selected the judges yep right and in my opinion, I feel that they are worthy mm -hmm. of judging these events. One thing I always say, though, is like, if you sign up to an event, you know who the judges are, then... Don't complain about the judges calling. Exactly, because yeah. the, whatever they say goes, and you knew who, who were the ones selected you to be in that what place. you were signing up for. Yeah. yeah. So, so there, there are some... Some people were surprised that Ilki got eliminated pretty early. Yeah. Um... Everyone booed. Yep. <laughs> oh, really? Was, there, there's, a few, there, there, there's, a, there's a few. There's a few. It happened a few times for a couple of dancers. The crowd was very in it this Isn't year. Isn't that so good, though? It is. It's tight. I think, it, I think it's really reaction. awesome. I think the worst one was, and I think the most people got upset, was Experimental Russell. <laughs> when, he got, when he got eliminated. People were literally sad. People were sad about that. Yeah. <laughs> Experimental Russell. It's funny though, because on the side he was like, "Oh man, I'm tired. I just want to get, I just want to get voted off." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I love the Experimental Russell. It, it's something different. It, it's, yeah. he's, he's entertaining. 
It is. Right? I think that's yeah. That's very different it. from Scout. Yeah. <laughs> He's just having fun, eh? And that's the beauty yeah. of it. Yeah, he's just out there having fun. But to kind of get back to that, the whole judges thing, um, it's always hard to do an old style or like open style and having different judges from different backgrounds and different cultures 100%. judging other styles, uh, especially if... Um, we'll take Crump, for example, just because... You know, yeah. Um, Crump. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically, uh, there's still a lot of dancers and a lot of judges who, for example, don't understand Crump fully and the way we see it. Um, that's why I can understand a lot of people going like, oh man, I think he, he took that. Like, you know, yeah. he shouldn't have been voted off. He took that and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's something that's just as a community, we still have to grow in terms of even if you're a judge and you're someone who's always get called to all style events. I think it's kind of your responsibility also to make sure that you know mm. different styles, at least like basic foundation so you can understand what you're judging. Yeah. Um, with the judges that I chose, like we had Andy um, Kuramato, we brought him back from last year because yeah, he was an amazing judge and he was on board on it and he's been very supportive with it. Um, and he's also been quite close with the crumb community, like they had like a few workshops and stuff when they did with Vox. The history yeah. day and stuff like that as well. So he does understand and quite, quite a bit. And they were involved when Trix was down here too. That's it, yeah. So uh, they brought down Cross Styles. Right. Shout out to Cross Styles. Uh, they brought down Trix and, uh, for the Crump community, which I think is pretty amazing considering that they're not Crumpers. Um, um, well, except for uh, Young young Trip, obviously, David. Yeah. He was yeah. part of that team, yeah. Um, but still, uh, I think it's pretty dope. Uh, we had Foxy. Uh, Foxy was representing like the b-boy hip-hop side so i kind of try to choose different judges that would represent all the styles if that makes sense um so obviously foxy b-boy hip-hop uh he would also been around for ages so he'd know all of his popping and locking or at least what he's looking for when he's judging stuff like that um andy whacking uh, also knows about like crump and he's been heavily involved in all the all style scene and just doing the tournaments and then obviously uh, our first international uh, judge, uh, Lightsaber, um, covering the crump side, but him being also a very versatile dancer, doing yeah. urban and all styles himself as well. I felt like those three judges would, um, yeah, should yeah. deliver for the night. I thought they did a good job. Yeah, I think I think it's really hard judging. You would know you've judged before. Yeah, um, I've judged a couple of times as well. It's always really hard and. Um, I think a lot of judges look at different things, you know, some people look more a little bit towards musicality, yeah. some people look more towards maybe like um, character and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, super um, hard job, man, and mm. like I always say when people ask me about it, it's, it's like, you don't, you don't know how hard it is until you're sitting in that seat, right? Because you're judging people you know, yeah. like, and that, that also adds like a little bit of thing too, it's like, oh, these are my boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you got to do what you feel is is, is the correct call. Yep. Um, and if you cheated mm -hmm. that, only you wouldn't know and you'd have mm -hmm. to deal with that. But um, it, it's it's a difficult thing to do, man, but mm -hmm. it's necessary. It has to be done. Yeah. We need judges. It's a competition, mm -hmm. right? We need winners. We need losers. Um, I think the other thing is though, because this is a bit of a different event, and for those who don't know, basically um, everyone jumps in once, and then at the end the judges would eliminate, for example, three, or this year we even had rounds where judges would eliminate six people, and the idea for it is to be like eliminating the weakest link, not saying that the dance is bad or anything like that, uh, but basically just uh, striving to keep just that one last best who survived the whole night. So. Some people might just saw other people's rounds better. It's not one versus one and you just compare and you're comparing against the whole 32 people or the 29, the 26 yeah. as we go How down. many people total were signed up to compete? Uh, this year we had 50, 51 people, I think. Yeah, signed up. A yeah, lot of dancers, so man. It's good, yeah. It's, it, it, it's heavy and it's hard to choose, yeah. So it's 50 people, and then uh, after the prelims, we chose 32, and that just went all the way down until uh, 13, and uh, Kevin, Kevin Lee, yeah, in the finals. Yeah, Kevin Lee, 
12 Bruce Lee or 12 Leo's in there. 12, 12 <laughs> Leo's in there as well, yeah, 12 AF. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was a good event, man. Um, it's like, well, now this one was super good. Now the mm. challenge for next year is like... <laughs> yeah, even more pressure. <laughs> That's right. But before, just before I forget, shout out to my team and my fan. Yeah. Um, shout out to um, J Troop, Young Troop, Little Troop all the way in Korea. We got Boy Troop, um, also Tip, Troop in Progress. <laughs> uh, he was away as well, but, um, and then most of all as well, also we got Twin Troop as well, and then all of them really, really helped and really put in like the effort and the time to help me set up uh, and just to plan ahead or get everything together. Um, my boy Token, he was there. At the oh, door. Mate, he He's was the there, man. mate. He didn't move He's a muscle, that fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, yeah, he, his man, his fam as well, like really helped me out and stuff like that at the door and making sure that everyone signed up properly. Um, Roxas X was running around helping as well. He was taking photos. Yeah. Um, Jeff, um, Kid UG Scout. Yeah, Kid UG Scout. Uh, that was his vinyl on the floor. So he's the man who oh, like, nice. let me borrow it. Uh, and yeah, of course, uh, my beautiful fiance. Um, she's just uh, always there to support me with all my crazy ideas. She was there to film it, and she just, um, even though she's so busy with like uni, like yeah. for her to like you know put that time in for me and just to really support me, it's just like I'm super grateful to her and just the whole BR team. Yeah. Yeah, like shout outs to you. It's 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 a. It's a uh, group effort obviously you know like, definitely I think that you need like a if you have a strong team yeah then uh, your event will run smooth you know, or your event will succeed but um it's it's hard to like don't do it on your own don't do it on your own if you think you're running don't events do don't do it on, on your, your own, own. <laughs> yeah there's no I in team yeah yeah definitely get a strong team to help you and support you yeah so um yeah it was successful not because of me or how i organized it it was successful because of the br team yeah that's very nice of you to say no it's a shout well, out to big them this guy, <laughs> <man. Yeah. laughs> actually i wanted to touch on um on liz yeah because right, I, I i feel like i love this is what i love about you two man you two are always together yeah. like Whenever I see you, Liz is there. Whenever I see Liz, Trip is there. And <clears throat> can you tell me about how important it is <clears throat> to have someone supporting you the way that Liz does? Oh, man, I wouldn't be here. I probably wouldn't be alive. She's amazing, Liz, bro. Like, she is amazing. Like, I'm not, like, <coughs> obviously I'm not in, like, the details like you are with her. But, like, just from the outside looking in, like we could really see a strong bond there but i just love the way that she's just fully supporting you even when she's recording your rounds bro like you can just hear it going crazy <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, how I'm, is. I'm i'm very lucky that first of all she's also a dancer so she understands like uh the dancer's life i guess always just like training or always like you know uh, competing or wanting to compete quarry wise or anything like that yeah so um i think she understands like you know because she's busy with union now and stuff but she still understands like i want to like yeah. i want to go out and go to lab and train and stuff like that so um yeah I'm, I'm i'm super grateful to her like i can't even express it really because i also think like that's it she's a crumper at heart I, like, I feel she, it. She might not <laughs> jump in the sessions, but she is a true crumper at heart. And her hype is the only <laughs> hype I need wherever I go in the world. Yeah, I just feel like you, you, probably when you hear people hype, that's probably the only voice you hear, right? <laughs> well, it's funny because, like, you know, I'll be sitting at work and I'll be watching some of my footages, yeah? We'll be on break and I'm watching my footages, and then <coughs> some of the boys at work, they already know her hype just from me watching the footage at work because they'll be like, You watching your own footage? I'm like, Yeah. Is that at least hyping? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear it. <laughs> Overpowers everyone. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, like she's always there to support me and uh, she's always there to really like, you know, help me when I'm down or when I'm feeling unsure about myself, whether it's in like tournaments or anything like that. 
like she'll always step to the side and like she'll whisper something in my ear and tell me like, you're good, you're good, like you know, yeah. you're know, you doing this, yeah. So, um, I love you, beautiful. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, yeah, I love that, bro. And, um, because there's, there's a lot to take on this because there are a lot of people I know, but I think it goes back to what you're saying because Liz is a dancer, so she mm. understands. But there are like, some people we get into relationships and then we never see them ever again. <laughs> it's like, hey, what are you doing, bro? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Won't let me come. Oh. <laughs> like all that kind of stuff. It kind of sucks. Yeah. But I think it comes back to what you're saying, though. You know, Liz is a dancer. She she's, comes a, yeah, yeah, she's she's been dancing for ages and uh, she she knows, she understands, yeah. Um, just got to, I guess, find that healthy balance because, um, yeah, got to know when to go out and when to just stay home and chill. Yeah. Some people were just like crop his life, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just like. laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, I mean, it does happen, and yeah, definitely helps the fact that she dances herself. Yeah. yeah, she understands. Yeah. Well, what's what's in the future for you? Near future? You know, what kind of plans do you have? Oh. Um. Uh, I'm gonna set myself a couple goals. Um, I've noticed that every single time I took bounds in crump is when I had little achievable goals. Mm. So, for example, my first goal was to get into SK. So, that was something that I saw that I could do, so I went for it. And once I did that, I was like, all right, what do I do What's now? next? Yeah. Yeah. Beast camp, strike a name. And that was next. Yeah, and I got that. And then now, um, it was BR. Um, in terms of at least dancing wise and stuff like that. Um, for now, I actually want to create a couple other events. Yeah. So, um, and um, because at the moment for me it's like BR. I'm running BR as yeah. my event, but I actually want to make a couple throughout the years. I guess yeah, just kind of maybe and link them together somehow or something like that. Yeah. But I think that'll be one of my goals. Um, and. Personally wise for like competition and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna go travel a little bit more overseas and just make my name out there a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I've already made my name more or less uh, in Australia. No, 100%. So I just want to yeah. expand that a little bit. Yeah, um, but other than that, I just want to, yeah, I also want to grow my family. So I want to make sure that I get a few more little homies, yeah. train them up and let them start take over. How many do you have right now, total? Uh, so, we got twin, J, young, little, boy, tip, six. Yeah. Pretty big. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. It's, um, they all get along, so it's really good. It's pretty chilled. And uh, they're constantly always talking on the thread and stuff like that, so I don't feel like I have to, like, you know, put it together or, like, start conversation yeah. for them or anything like that. So I think I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the, I like your little homies. I think they're very, they're very respectful. You know, like every time I come around, they, uh, they don't have to. You know, I'm like pretty chill. I'm just, but like when I see like an OG, like you know, mm -hmm. they're pretty uh, respectful to, to those guys who came before them. Uh, it's always like, oh, these guys are pretty good, man. Good oh, kids. That, that, that right. raising them well. Right. <laughs> No, nah, it's just it's just them. I'm I'm not even doing anything. Hey? I'm, yeah. I'm just there. <laughs> it's all. Oh, I'm just lucky to have little homies like that. Yeah. Um, I think also I guess partially going back is because I I got brought up by two OGs, Roxas and yeah. um, Chaos. Chaos. Yeah. So um, I understand um, that whole level of respect and the whole idea behind a big homie. Where it's not just a name. But it's actually a family and a big brother type of role. And I guess, like, you know, once they're ready to have their own name, like, you know, some do, like, priests and stuff like that. But once they get their little homies, I just hope yeah. that it gets passed on to them as well. Yeah, that's good yeah. stuff, bro. Yeah, you're doing, you're doing a good thing for our community, man. I'm actually real grateful for you and Ants because it just makes things a little easier for me, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, one more thing before I let you go. Yep. Yeah, what advice would you give um, young crumpers coming up in the game? Um, because you're someone who's like, you know, you legit started from the bottom, 
Mm. And then now you're here, you're one of the best in Australia. Everybody knows who you are. And how, what advice would you give to someone to help them on their journey to mm. one day being in your position, running events, um, traveling, um, getting a big name? Mm. Um, I guess just like earn your yards. Like don't try to jump and like try to battle. <clears throat> yeah, I guess um, just to kind of summarize it. Uh, yeah, just try to make sure you start from the bottom. Uh, there's no point of trying to go 200% and jumping somewhere far, far away without actually learning what's holding that. If that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm, I really strongly believe is um, back to basics. Back to basics with everything, whether it's crumb your foundations, whether it's the relationship, back to basic, just simple respect and trust. Um, and just, yeah, slowly building it up. Like, uh, your time will come. You don't have to now, 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 now. Yeah, give it some time. Grow. Uh, and enjoy the process. I think that's a big thing as well. Like, enjoy getting there because once you get there or you get to a certain point different problems come <laughs> and then you have to worry about those problems mm -hmm. and then you think about ah oh, i remember when i just rock up to the session maybe get called out it's all good yeah, yeah. um but yeah just start small and expand from it um build your relationships build the trust build the respect and then if you want to get into events Start small, start running sessions. Sessions. Start running sessions, start running street events, little things, you know, uh, little battles, battle nights, um, classes, workshops, like, you know, that teaches you a lot. Like, if you want to run events, learn how to run a workshop. Um, just with the local pumpers, like, get someone from Southeast, mm. bring them to the city, get them to teach workshop, and see what happens, and see what you can learn from that experience. And then apply that experience to your next thing and the next thing and as you slowly grow. Yeah. I guess. Man, yeah. That is that is golden <laughs> advice, man. That is golden yeah. advice. Cause if you skip levels, right, if you skip steps, you're gonna end up coming back to it anyway. Because you you can't progress without learning them. So you're wasting time by like going forward and back. Yeah, forward good. and back. You know, and so my belief is if you do things the right way, <coughs> right, if you do things properly, mm. I promise you, like, whoever's listening, you doubt is whoever's listening to this, right, if you do things the right way, I promise you, you will get to where you want to get to. That's right, that's right. Trust me, you might, the process might be long, right, for some, some people, mm. it is, it's just a long process. Some people can, can get it real quick, you know, mm. then, but however long your process is, you just got to stick to it and just be patient man because your time will come True. look at this guy <laughs> i told you guys i see this guy when he first came and now he's like our main guy so <laughs> nah, it's possible i'm just chilling in the back yeah he, see this he's always the humble guy this guy <laughs> <laughs> but i'll gas him up because it's true <laughs> nah um yeah it's true just yeah take your time grow enjoy um and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, I guess one of the things that we can touch on as well, like with the new gen these days, not as many people battle compared to what it used to be. Yeah. Um, and even that goes for me sometimes. Like I noticed myself um, kind of being at a session or like a lab and kind of like, oh, no, I don't really want to battle. Like, oh, it doesn't feel right. Like, you know, everyone's just chilling, having fun. But uh, for Krampus to grow, I think battle is a very key. Number one, bro. Yeah, that's, that's like iron sharpens iron. Yeah, and just, um, it's, it's important. So, yeah, don't be afraid to go and battle. And battles don't have to be beefy or anything like that. Uh, I mean, they can be beefy in the battle, but, like, you know, you can call someone out out of respect just because it's like, damn, man, I think you're tight. I want to see how well I do against you. Lose, go lap, come back next week. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, bro. Alright, my well, man. You sure? Appreciate the time. Appreciate you having me here. Thanks for coming on. And we'll get you back on, bro. Like this, whenever you have an event coming up, we'll get you on. Ooh. Just whenever something. 
Yeah, we'll see you again, bro. But this is a good introduction to you. Uh, what you've been doing. Thank you. Thank um, you. Keep up. Keep up the good work, man. Yeah, I think before. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just want to say, like, I really, really appreciate everyone who's ever purchased my tea or my hoodie. Um, I've been dabbling in it a little bit here and there. <laughs> bro, I'm rocking one right now, bro. <laughs> nah, man. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's very surreal to like you know watch footage from around Australia and seeing people rocking like my designs and stuff. Yeah, like King that. of Black Eight uh, <coughs> in Japan. The yeah, boys man. Are the boys there. are rocking this battle royale shirt right here, and um, yeah, I was like, damn man, that's so cool, so tight. So just yeah, just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who's ever helped me out purchased, shared, liked my link or anything like that, I do appreciate it and I got a lot more coming for you guys. I do. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Whole life, life, man.